The Psychology of Fame and Celebrity. Why do people want to be famous? Huge numbers of young people want to be famous. What drives such a near universal desire? What effect does that desire have on people? What are the realities of fame and celebrity? Aspirations for fame are motivated mainly by the need for validation and attention. Fame also, generally speaking, brings wealth. Fame gives access to earning opportunities to which anonymity is denied. How many product endorsement contracts have been formed between multinational organizations and Mr. or Ms. Unknown? Publicity pays. Publicity pays so much that people and organizations the world over are prepared to pay in all sorts of ways for attention, for fame, for celebrity. The desire for fame can warp people's thinking. A brief viewing of what people are prepared to do to appear on reality TV shows reveals the depth of motivation. Any motivation that powerful can easily be misdirected, misfocused, or abused. Several mass murderers have expressed that they were, or were thought to have been, motivated by notoriety. I won't mention their names, but most people can list several and cite the names of several of the most evil people in history, indicating their desire for notoriety was realized. Vast industries make huge amounts of money claiming to make people and products famous. Marketing, advertising, public relations, spin doctors, copywriters, photo editors, and many other roles exist to make people, organizations, products, and services famous. Why? People buy only after their attention is on what they are considering buying. The fame industry, sales and marketing in all its forms, makes the rest of the economy work. Over 9% of the workforce is in the fame industry, trying to get your attention on whatever they are selling. Attention pays. The hugely successful and internationally famous 19th century showman P.T. Barnum is still celebrated today in the fame industry. There's no such thing as bad publicity, he famously said. It seems that any kind of attention pays. Barnum again. I don't care what the newspapers say about me as long as they spell my name right. Another master of fame, Oscar Wilde, pinpointed the need for people to have their existence recognized. There's only one thing in the world worse than being talked about, and that is not being talked about, he said. Almost every media outlet obtains most of its content and revenue from people seeking publicity. Public relations agencies place stories with the media every hour of every day worldwide in the hope of free publicity. Advertisers are given greater editorial coverage of their stories if they spend more on advertising, all to make something or someone more famous in order to generate more revenue. When young people see the wealth, status and privilege given to famous people, it is little wonder that so many want those benefits. Fame, in many cases, has nothing to do with talent or success. Joni Mitchell is reported to have said, I heard someone from the music business saying that they are no longer looking for talent. They want people with a certain look and a willingness to cooperate. That is, music companies know what it takes to sell music, and most of it has nothing to do with music. Young people seem more drawn towards fame than middle-aged and older people, and it seems to have been that way for some time if the observation of Lord Byron was accurate in its day. Fame is the thirst of youth, he said. Hundreds of millions of people are on social media trying to become famous. Social media may not have increased the desire for fame, it may simply have better enabled the expression of that desire. There seems to be something deep and enduring in the core of human nature that needs recognition, significance, appreciation, validation. Perhaps we ought to update the ideas of the 17th century philosopher René Descartes from I think, therefore I am, to you think of me, therefore I am.
Maybe for those who are most driven to be famous, for anything or nothing, the phrase can go further. No one thinks of me, therefore I am not. You may have seen people taking and posting photographs of the most mundane activities. If there is no picture, it didn't happen. Is not just an element of social media culture, it comes from the legal system. Courts worldwide will discount any claims without evidence. If there is no evidence, it didn't happen. That takes us to the dark side of fame and celebrity. Celebrity comes with a heavy, heavy price. As I once expressed to one of my CEO clients, hello fame, goodbye privacy. Brad Pitt famously said, Fame makes you feel permanently like a girl walking past construction workers. When people look at the prizes fame can bring, it seems they give little consideration to its cost. For many, the cost is not just a lot, it is everything. If we were to list the number of famous people who have killed themselves just in the 21st century alone, it runs into hundreds Yes, hundreds. Fame can be toxic for many reasons, not least of which is the hounding by the media, looking for its next story, seeking to expose the feet of clay today of someone they portrayed as walking on clouds yesterday. Please, don't blame the media. It behaves the way it does because of public demand. It is in all of us to look for heroes and role models, and once found, when they inevitably turn out not to be perfect, to seek to bring them down. How many heads of state have been elected on the basis of telling people what they wanted to hear, only to fail to deliver on those same undeliverable promises? Fame can be toxic from within, too. Humans are all too tempted to believe their own hype, or the hype created around them, and when they cannot live up to it, the mental ill health seeds that have previously been sown sprout as poisoned ivy. Joni Mitchell described the gulf between the hype of fame and its reality rather concisely. Fame is a series of misunderstandings surrounding a name. In the decades I have been coaching, I have worked with some amazing CEOs, any one of whom would have made a brilliant head of state. None wanted it. Why? They wanted to serve to deliver, and do what was right, with integrity, without any fuss, and certainly did not want fame and all that goes with it. In fact, to many, fame would have made doing their job harder, and accordingly they turned down almost all media requests for interviews. That is the modern application of ancient leadership wisdom. 2,500 years ago, Sun Tzu noted, a good commander is benevolent and unconcerned with fame. In my experience, the most skilled people in many fields are hugely more effective than those who are in the public eye. Indeed, they may be so much more capable because, instead of seeking fame, they spent that time becoming more effective. People react to fame in very different ways. Fame doesn't fulfill you. It warms you a bit, but that warmth is temporary, said Marilyn Monroe. Woody Harrelson, it's an odd beast fame. It's got multiple personalities. Fame is like a VIP pass wherever you want to go, said Leonardo DiCaprio. What explains fame? No one can be famous unless others are talking about them. Fame seems to come less from the famous person than the people whose interest causes the fame. Fame, therefore, is best understood by looking at the talkers. When someone loves what they do, it is much more likely that they will succeed. Why? They keep going, buoyed by their passion, getting better and better long after others have quit. It is also more likely that people around them will sense both their love of the field and their performance level and start talking. Those are some of the precursors of talent-based fame. However, it is not the full picture. Some people are the best in the world at what they do, and no one pays any attention. For example, somewhere in the world there is someone who is the best at keeping the sewage system in their area working as well as possible. They are not famous. Talkers don't talk about them. They remain underground, 
excuse the pun. Fame also needs a supply and demand element. Top surgeons take decades to train. Few make it that far. The level of dedication and study to become so skilled is very unusual, increasing the value of the skills. The supply of top surgeons is small and the demand for their services is high. Even so, few top surgeons are famous. Something more is required. Let's turn to a more visible example to understand. Top soccer players are so well paid because of their rarity value and what people are prepared to pay to watch them play. That is, the most famous people are those in fields that, by necessity, have high exposure to the public. The railway maintenance engineer with the best safety record in the world is not seen by the public and is not famous, yet has saved countless lives over the span of their career. The link between talent and fame is mediated by public exposure, hence the reason so many people and organisations spend so much time and money trying to get public exposure. Some fame is luck-based, for instance, lottery winners and people who are in the right place at the right time. Some people are famous because they receive publicity after their press release came out on a slack news day. Others who achieved world firsts remain obscure because their news broke on the same day as a war or the latest corruption scandal. Fame is a fickle monster. It can make and break a person on the same day. Some people rise on its wave and others are swamped under it. If fame is what you want and you find yourself being validated and recognised by large numbers of people, resolve to use it wisely and for the common good. One of the most famous people in history, Muhammad Ali, said, I wanted to use my fame and this face that everyone knows so well to help uplift and inspire people around the world. He did exactly that. If you become famous, for whatever reason, what good will you do for others? How would you use your fame to make the world a better place?